All right, good morning, guys. It is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. It is the start of a new year, and this channel is officially one years old. Now, I haven't actually posted for a full year. I did have a very long seven-month hiatus during the summer, so I can't claim that I've been posting videos for a full year, but this channel is a year old. Uh, so, uh, I've got a weird goatee that's about to be shaved. This was just for New Year's, so let's jump into the news. So it's actually a pretty quiet day overall. There's not a lot of stories going on in the market, but there's a few, few things worth mentioning. So the Dow is currently down about 200 points. Uh, it's at 37.814. Uh, S&P is down about 34 points. Uh, NASDAQ futures are down about 176 points. Oil is up about uh, is up to $73 per barrel right now. Our favorite indicator, gold, is at uh, $2,076, so again, still above the 2000 mark I talk about often. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today that I don't often talk about is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is up to, uh, past 45000 for the first time since, I believe, April of 2022. Uh, this is in response mostly to the fact that BlackRock is going to be making a Bitcoin ETF. This has been in the news for a while. But I guess it's finally hit the point where people are seeing it. So uh, Bitcoin is now past 45,000. BlackRock ETF is pending at this point. So if it does, this becomes pretty much essentially a publicly traded commodity, which means that uh, it's more or less legitimized. Uh, I know a lot of people in the Bitcoin space have a problem with this. I'm not a crypto guy, so I have no opinion on this. I'm simply reporting as it comes. But uh, it's definitely going to change the Bitcoin market. I think it will uh, institute some regulation because if it's being uh, traded this legitimately, you know regulation is coming. Uh, it's also probably going to mean that the price is going to surge higher. Um, so Bitcoin was, I think, historically at around 60000 So it's definitely going to probably push uh, past that mark with this ETF. Uh, next story is about Iran. So Iran is moving ships into the Red Sea. I know this is mostly a political story, but I will mention it because it may affect the price of oil. We've talked about uh, some of the incidents that are going on in the Red Sea that are affecting global trade. This is likely to intensify that. Uh, so I'm just going to mention that one thing in passing. Next story is uh, about uh, the trade with China. So it does seem as if the uh, Biden administration is just as territorial as the uh, Trump administration. This is nothing new because this is something we have talked about before, but now it's becoming uh, very legitimized. So the Biden administration has uh, barred uh, a, a Netherlands chip manufacturer, ASML, I believe is the chip manufacturer, from trading with uh, China. Now, the interesting thing is this is, became policy uh, as of yesterday, but Apparently, the Biden administration put pressure on the company to block all trade with China, all sales to China of their chips prior. So this was actually something that they pressured the company to do months before the policy came into effect, uh, just to show how uh, aggressive the administration is on uh, trade with China. So uh, this is likely to intensify. Uh, it seems that each passing month and each passing administration uh, we are becoming more and more competitive and more and more adversarial with China. This is uh, is an election year, but it seems like it doesn't really matter who wins. That's going to continue because the two frontrunners are still Obama and Trump. I'm sorry, Biden and Trump. Uh, and both of them are very territorial and both seem to institute a MAGA policy regardless of what you may hear about Biden. He is incredibly territorial and has not removed any of the tariffs that Trump had put into place. Uh, in addition, in uh, reference to China, so here's an interesting story in the fact that China's electric car manufacturer, BYD, is poised to surpass uh, U.S. Tesla leader in production for the second year of running, uh, reporting more than 3 million new vehicles made in 2023. Uh, in that crazy uh, conversation with uh, Andrew Sorkin that Elon Musk had just a few, uh, I guess it was a few weeks ago, uh, the one where he told uh, many advertisers to go screw themselves, uh, one of the uh, nuggets of good information in there was the fact that Musk was talking about how aggressive Chinese electric car manufacturers truly are. Uh, he said that in the future he sees them being a much bigger competitor than anybody domestically, and this is further proof for that. So they've already produced 3 million cars. Granted, they're not penetrating the U.S. market. I don't think they ever will, I, and I say that with quotations, obviously, saying it never is, uh, is a bit of a, of a brash statement. But 
I don't think they will simply because how territorial U.S. car manufacturers are. Uh, if you'll remember a few years ago, there was a big hubbubble about uh, Toyota and their airbags and their pedals sticking and all sorts of crazy uh, stories and congressional hearings that were really just a nothing burger. There was nothing going on. They were just looking for an excuse to discredit Ford manufacturers because at the time, the big three were just doing abysmal. And uh, the big three are very, very territorial. And uh, the fact that they let Tesla exist was simply because they uh, never really saw it as a, as a credible threat. And to a lot of extent, they still don't, right? They can still outcompete Tesla on much of the manufacturing of it. But to have a foreign company come in and try to disrupt the local market just isn't going to happen anytime soon. But this is big news for anywhere outside of the United States. Uh, China could begin selling into Europe. Uh, Russia and China are tightening relations by the day. They're going, growing closer by the day. And uh, Russia does not really have a domestic car manufacturing market. So this is a large market that China can tap into, not to mention parts of the Middle East, Africa, Australia, etc. So uh, it's a very interesting story, and I am curious to see where it leads. I have not seen these cars myself. I was actually talking to my dad about this a few weeks ago, and he said he has seen some of these cars on YouTube videos, and they are incredibly impressive. So China is not to be uh, un uh, underestimated. They are a powerhouse in many fields, and it seems electric cars is the newest. Uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, I don't have a lot of stories going on today. It's uh, kind of a turbulent morning, but not a lot going on. Uh, the only other thing to mention is that uh, Apple has been downgraded. Uh, as you know, we reported that Apple has had issues with uh, their iWatch sales, but this is also in response to the fact that their Apple, uh, their iPhone sales were down uh, in their last quarter as well. So Barclays has downgraded them. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, uh, so kind of a slow news day. I will be back tomorrow morning, uh, and we'll go from there. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the morning.